Today in the news, we got a GPU information dump and some gaming news. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with NVIDIA. With CES approaching very fast, a lot of rumors and leaks are starting to either change or solidify. We thought that NVIDIA would launch a couple of GPUs, specifically a new version of the uh, RTX 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and an RTX 3090 Ti. There was also a lower end RTX 3050. There were also rumors of an RTX 3080 with more VRAM, but we'll get back to that one in a second. Turns out, NVIDIA allegedly moved the RTX 3070 Ti launch, which means that we're not going to see it at CES 2022. This information comes from Igor Walasek, who got this intel through his own sources. Instead of CES, the card would apparently get launched after the Chinese New Year, which is on February 1st. This would coincide with Intel possibly announcing or at least revealing a little more information on their Arc GPU, the uh, Alchemist line. It's kind of Nvidia's thing, isn't it? Wait for the competition to release or talk about something and boom, hit them right back with uh, whatever you got going. In any case, as is the RTX 3090 Ti is still on the docket for January 4th and the uh, same is expected for the RTX 3050. Now, getting back to that RTX 3080 with more VRAM. So far, that was all we knew. It was an RTX 3080, but with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 instead of 10. But now we know that uh, this is not the only change. According to videocards.com, the new card would have a wider memory bus at 384 bits instead of 256, and its core count would also be raised from 8,704 CUDA cores to 8,960. That's a jump of just under 3%. Now this core count might ring a bell since we talked about it earlier this year when we thought that we would be getting an RTX 3080 Super. With these upgrades, the card would have a slightly higher TDP, probably around 350 watts compared to the original 3080s, uh, 320. I personally really hope that Nvidia does call it the RTX 3080 Super, just because calling it 3080 12 gig might cause some confusion. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Next up, we got, well, more GPU news. At least this one's a little weird. So there's a mining farm out there that basically eats Ethereum for breakfast, lunch, and supper. It has a collective mining rate of 2.5 Terra hashes. That's a lot of hashes, which is insane. The weird part though is that the workers within that mining farm, so the actual GPUs, are listed as RTX 4090 Ti and RX 7000 series GPUs. Does that mean that these GPUs are already out there? No. At least probably not. It's likely just someone who thought that it would be fun to change the name of their uh, GPUs to unreleased ones to stir up the internet a little bit. So yeah, if you hear anything about those RX 7000 or 4090 Ti's, especially when it has to do with the mining farm, it's probably fake. Next up, let's do our free game check. It's been a while. Now, unfortunately, you only got about a day to get this one, but you can snatch up Godfall Challenger Edition for free right now. If you remember, I did an FSR comparison video a while back, and to test it, I used Godfall. So I had to play it quite a bit, and it's a really fun game if you're into uh, no-brain hack-and-slash type games. Plus, it's free, so you can pad your library. If you're not into low-brain activity games, how about a strategy one? You can get Prison Architect for free, too. It's a strategy game where, well, you run a prison. It's an old game, but it looks like a lot of fun, so check it out. Moving on to some peripheral news. Do you have Noctua fans? Does the tan and brown clash with your uh, build aesthetic? Well, you can match at least one of your peripherals with it now. The company partnered up with Drop to release some Cherry MX compatible keycaps in their color scheme, so tan and brown. Personally, not my thing, but hey, if you like Noctua, why not? You can pre-order them for a hefty $115 for the base keycap set, and they obviously have multiple options if you need more of a different type of set. 
And lastly, in gaming news, we got Ubisoft confirming the comeback of Sam Fisher. That's a Splinter Cell for those of you who don't know. Uh, I played the first couple of games on Xbox and back then I absolutely loved it. So I'm glad that it's not a new game. It's actually a rebuild of the original classic using the Snowdrop engine, which will also be used on new games like Ubisoft's new Avatar and Star Wars game. Now we don't have any footage of the new Splinter Cell yet, but by looking at the Avatar game, we can tell that uh, that Splinter Cell is going to look muy bueno, real good. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed, drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.